Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. If you want more of this podcast, go over to patreon.com slash Eddie Pepitone for exclusive content and stand-up clips from the man himself. And now, welcome to Apocalypse Soon, the podcast with no upside. And here he comes. He's alive and well. He's recovering in Woodstock. He's the man with the hats. It's Eddie Pepitone. Hey, everybody. It's Eddie Pepitone. And again, I'm doing another uh, remote uh, podcast, not in the studio. I have been recovering nicely here in Woodstock. I'm really resting a lot. Um, I feel better. I'm going to start performing again uh, this week. I'm going to start in uh, uh, the colony here in Woodstock. Oh, it's very convenient, Eddie. That's right. And then, uh, you know, going to Schenectady and Worcester and then taking uh, some time to go back to L.A. and then heading on the road again to Denver. All this with J.T. Habersat. All this on my website, eddiepepitone.com. And uh, so I hope you enjoy this crazy, wacky uh, shit that I come up with here in the woods of Woodstock. It's very, very um, (laughs) nature-encircled. It's beautiful here. Um, And I'm really lucky to have a place like this, my sister's place. And uh, she's just a doll making me all kinds of food and taking care of me. We just saw Barbie, the movie. Uh, last night in a little theater called The Tinker. Yeah, it's a theater in Woodstock, if you've ever been here in Woodstock, New York. And we saw Barbie, and Barbie was uh, pretty good, actually. Um, uh, Definitely entertaining. And, uh, you know, even though I'm more of an Oppenheimer guy, if if you put Barbie and Oppenheimer in front of me, I go for Oppenheimer, but I'm glad I saw Barbie. Um, and also, come here, you bastard. Who are you? My name is Bink Finkelstein. Bink Finkelstein? Bink, you idiot. Come here. Go. What are you doing? Who are you? How'd you get in here? I got here from the train from Billings, Montana. You stupid bastard. Come here. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bink Finkelstein, and welcome to the nightmare that is this podcast. Enjoy it. Okay, everybody. Let's do a guided meditation. Now, my name is Bink Finkelstein. That's B-I-N-G-K-Y-L-F-I-N-K-E-L-S-T-E-I-N-B-Z-F. For those of you who may want to write some kind of review about the takeover of this podcast by Bink Finkelstein, B I N G F Y S. Anyway, I spelled it before. So here we go guided meditation. I'm taking over for Eddie Pepitone this week. Please, guys, please, guys, help me. I've been tied up. You shut up, you stupid bastard. This is Bink Finkelstein, and I'll not have you interrupt my podcast. (laughs) Hey guys, this is Eddie Pepitone, and I need you to call some kind of authority. I don't believe in the police, so I don't know. Call some kind of authority that could help me. Like, um, maybe... No, I don't believe in the judiciary anyway. You shut up, Pepitone, you fool. I just bludgeoned him and knocked him out. Now, with your first in-breath, I want you to breathe in the sweetness of abduction. Yes, that's right. You heard me right. The sweetness of abduction. Just imagine you're you're getting kidnapped and someone gently puts 
duct tape over your mouth and then throws you into a trunk and says, if you make a sound, I'll kill you. I want you to breathe that in. I'm Bink Fickleston. Breathe it in. Breathe in the abduction, the sweetness of an abduction. And now, with your first out-breath, I want you to breathe out the feeling of terror that comes with an abduction. You know that feeling. You just feel like, oh my God, my life is over. I should have made that pass at Molly Fredrickson in third grade. I ruined my life by not following what I always wanted to follow. I should have made love to the several women who I saw in the spelling bee when I was 19. I should have made love to those contestants, men and women. I could have been bisexual, but instead I'm about to be killed here in a trunk of a beautiful SUV. Do they have trunks? Let's hope so. (laughs) Guys, guys, please help me. Help me. I've been kicked. I thought I bludgeoned you into submission. No, don't hit me again, Bliff. It's Blink, you fucking idiot. You shouldn't curse. You shouldn't curse. That fucks up the algorithm. Hey, you just curse. It fucks up the algorithm when you're trying to promote this on Instagram. <laughs> so be it. Anybody who lives by the algorithm of Instagram is doomed to failure. And now with your next in-breath, I want you to breathe in the succulence, the succulence of when you cook onions with zucchini and um, beautiful squash. I want you to breathe in zucchini and onions and pumpkin squash and all those beautiful substances that, uh, that sustain us, but as you're cooking this and continue with your in-breath, hopefully you're in light-fitting clothing. (laughs) As if light-fitting clothing is going to help you in this crumbling, crumbling society of murder and instant gratification. I want you to breathe in all these succulent smells of onions and butternut squash and pumpkin squash and zucchini. Breathe it in in extra virgin olive oil and garlic thinly sliced. But as as you're making these vegetables in your kitchen, you see someone right outside your window who's got a black mask on and he breaks your window and he grabs you by the throat. Breathe that in. Breathe that in. There's a home invasion going on as you're making a delicious vegan meal. Breathe it in. This animal that has... Actually, that's a bad word for a human being. Human beings don't deserve the term animal. Human beings are unconscionable creatures who lust and lust and don't know compassion. Bimf! Bimf! Bink, you fucking idiot. Don't curse. Please don't curse, Bink. You're not supposed to curse the Instagram algorithm. You are an idiot, Peppertone. It's Bink, and I'm gonna bludgeon you into submission again. I've just bludgeoned him into submission. So as you're making all these beautiful vegan vegetables and extra virgin olive oil and garlic, you've been grabbed by the throat by a human being, an unconscionable product of capitalism, who grabs you by the throat and he throttles you and he pulls you toward the window and all he does is he starts singing a Frank Sinatra tune and it goes 
knows a little something like this and you're still doing your in-breath, don't make me come to your place where you abode, where you live, where you toil. I will come there and I will kill you if you don't continue your in-breath in the Sinatra song that he sang through the window to his captured prey was a summer wind comes rolling in from across the bay bum 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 a summer wind oh and he keeps He kept singing until the end, and you died right there from the strangulation. And now, with your next out-breath, I want you to breathe in the air, the air, the putrid air that surrounds us all the time. The putrid, putrid stench of capitalism gone amok. Of capitalism destroying us. The factory stench. The horrific pollution. Bink! Bink! Well, at least you got my name right. Bink! Bink, let me go. You're not doing the guided meditation right. My people who listen to the guided meditation need it done in a certain way. Ho, <laughs> Mr. Peppertoad, you're wrong. Your guided meditations have not touched the marrow of how they're supposed to be touched. And now I'm going to bludgeon you again. <laughs> Oh, he's got so many bruises on his head. And that stench of capitalism that you're breathing out is the stench from all the machines and technology and horrific metals and horrific, horrific pollution. The pollution is mirrored. It's actually created by an inner disease called ego and glorification of the ego. And the only way this pollution was stopped for just a moment was by a global pandemic. Yes, a global pandemic, one of the first of many. And with that, I want you to breathe it out. Yes, breathe it out. And now, with your next in-breath, I want you to go downstairs. If you're on a ground-level apartment or ground-level house, then I just want you to go outside. But I want you to go outside, whether whatever level you're on, first floor, second floor, ground level. And I want you to go outside, and I want you to steal an automobile. This is with your next in-breath, remember. I want you to steal an automobile. How you start it is up to you. There are many ways to start a stolen car, and I want you to take that car, and I want you to drive it through a bank, be it Chase Bank, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Citibank, or any one of them, and I want you to drive through the window yelling, the people united will never be divided, and as you as you propel yourself into the bank and you see your life running before you, you see the fact that you should have asked out all of the members of your spelling bee unit out for a drink or out for coffee or out just to be part of life with you. Instead, you played by the 
goddamn rules. You played by the goddamn rules, and you lived your life in a tightly wound, in a tightly wound, preordained way by a capitalist, Catholic, I mean, a capitalist culture that wants you to be not yourself, that wants you to not have an ounce of real freedom. You know, when the people, by the way, this is still your in-breath. You know, the people who say, oh, Bink, <laughs> you got my name right again, huh? Bink, please. First of all, this meditation, Bink, it's too long. You... My meditations were always five minutes. You're up to 12 minutes and 45, 48 seconds, 40. Yes, that's right, because maybe this isn't just a guided meditation. Maybe I'm taking over your entire podcast. <laughs> My entire podcast? Yes, maybe I'm taking over your entire podcast. <laughs> what do you mean? You're going to do driving in the rain as Bink Finkelstein? Yes, that's right. <laughs> and now, and now, I want you to take your final out breath. And with that out breath, I want you to know that Bink Finkelstein has taken over this podcast. And now another episode of Driving in the Rain with Bink Finkelstein. The rain started pouring, pouring like maple syrup. <laughs> maple syrup. You know, the kind of syrup that came from dying trees in Maine and Vermont and Canada, you know, the dying northern hemisphere, the rain. It came, started pouring like maple syrup, slow and viscous. My car were the pancakes and I had to deliver a breakfast burrito with extra salsa, extra guacamole, extra sour cream, and extra flour tortilla to a man only known as Bullshit McGee. That's right, and I was driving with the rain pouring down like water out of a Brita water picture that had been shot through with a bullet hole. That's right, a Brita water pitcher that wasn't working anymore. Biff, please, it's not Biff, you idiot. It's Bink. Bink, please, driving in the rain needs a certain voice, yes. And that voice is mine, Peppertone. I have been subjected to your fucking podcast for, for a year and a half now. I listen to it in my small room in Montana, in Billings, Montana, where men and men and women are women and children are children. And I listen to your podcast and I said, one day I'm going to make it better. And here I am and there you are. I snuck up behind. I know what you did, Bink. You snuck up behind me here in Woodstock. That's right, Peppertone. You didn't think I'd find you on Woodstock, but Woodstock is very small, is it not? All right, Bink, look. Please don't do driving in the rain. Shut up. Let me look for my taser. No, please don't tase me. I have a bad heart. Oh, do you now? We all have bad hearts, Mr. Peppertone. It's called being in the human race. Oh, you've been tased. 
and knocked out back to driving in the rain. And this breakfast burrito with extra salsa, extra guacamole, extra sour cream, extra, extra, read all about it. Biff, big... You see, you've got me mispronouncing my name. You're lucky you're knocked out. Bink Finkelstein was delivering to someone who knew that wrong was wrong and right was right. He was delivering this breakfast burrito to Bullshit McGee, a man who got kicked out of the circus for being too obtuse. That's right. Not many people get kicked out of the circus for being too obtuse. But he was someone who, every time he spoke to you, you really didn't know what he was saying. He was around a certain topic, but nobody knew what the hell he was saying. Nobody knew! And the rain was pouring down like that Brita water pitcher that had been shot through full of holes by a man who broke into somebody's home and sang them something from Tom Jones. You remember this one? It's not unusual to be caught by anyone. It's not unusual to be in love with anyone. Anyway, the rain kept coming down. My roof to the car I was driving, you know, the Uber slash Lyft slash DoorDash slash Uber Eats slash Instacart slash Bloodmobile slash Bookmobile slash Riss slash a guitarist. <laughs> the rain was leaking through the roof of my vehicle. That's right. I was in the gig economy, which meant there were no benefits. There were no <laughs> health care. You know, the gig economy designed to put the metal boot on workers' necks by the incomprehensible, cruel, ruling class. My gig economy vehicle was leaking just like this whole country's soul was leaking, but I had to get this breakfast burrito with extra stuff, extra guacamole, extra sour cream, extra salsa, extra flour tortilla, to bullshit McGee, the obtuse former circus performer. That's right, he was a former performer, and the rain now was coming down with a ferocity that even the king of the jungle, when there were jungles, when there were lions, when there was an ecosystem. Actually, I'm doing this recording of driving in the rain from a bunker way beneath the surface of the earth. I've kidnapped Eddie Pepperton and me, Bink Finkelstein. Me and Pepperton are the only survivors, and I do this driving in the rain as the ecosystem is perished. And this is one of the last, maybe perhaps the last recording ever recorded, but I had to get this breakfast burrito to Bullshit McGee. And Bullshit McGee was outside in the rain, the atmospheric rain. The atmospheric river that came from the Pacific Ocean. I don't know if you've done any research on atmospheric rivers, but it is something that is going on with global warming where 
it, the Pacific Ocean is warming and there could be such an atmospheric river with such ferocity that it could come into Los Angeles, California and Central California, the whole state of California and submerge the cities and millions and millions dying. They would die of floods, but I had to get this to bullshit McGee before the atmospheric river storm from the warmed Pacific Ocean took root and I saw bullshit McGee standing outside in the rain and he was being very obtuse indeed with his friend Frederick. Frederick who also was in the circus. Frederick was not kicked out of the circus. Frederick retired which with full benefits. You know what full benefits are in this circus? Full benefits are a bottle of bourbon, a cigarette, and a pistol. That's what the full benefits of the circus are. So if you're thinking of joining the circus, maybe you should take a note from Frederick's handbook that it isn't worth it. <laughs> Bet. Bank, bank, please let me out. This isn't even a driving in the rain. It's not even a driving in the rain. Bank, it's some kind of weird hybrid. What are you doing? <laughs> Listen, Peppertone, this is no longer your podcast. I don't know if you know it, but I... At the end of the last bit of this podcast, and I'm not sure whether it's going to be an ode to Pepitune or whether it's going to be the last newscaster on Earth or whether it's going to be Where is Rupert. On the last bit that I do, I am going to end your existence by making you eat a very bad creme brulee. No, don't make me eat a very bad creme brulee. Yes, I'm talking about a creme brulee that the caramelized sugar on top is not going to be done properly. I can't eat a creme brulee where the caramelized sugar is not done properly. That's right, when you tap a spoon on this creme brulee, it's not going to crackle. It's just going to sink into the creme brulee. What are you, Biff, please? It's not Biff, you idiot. It's Bink. You've been tased again. And so Bullshit McGee was talking to Frederick, and I drove through the horrific atmospheric river that had made its way to Southern California and all life forms were being destroyed but I got to Bullshit McGee with the breakfast burrito just before the last bit of atmospheric river covered us all covered us all in death and I said to Bullshit McGee why are you so obtuse and his last words were I really don't know And now for another episode of The Last Newscaster on Earth. Good evening. I am fucking insane. And I am the last newscaster on Earth. And our top story tonight. 
There is nothing out there. <laughs> a top story tonight. I'm fucking crazier than I thought. That's right. <laughs> I'm fucking crazier than I thought. And now, let's go to Biff. I mean, Bink Finkelstein for the weather. Well, the weather is fucked up. <laughs> Let's go back to fucking insane. I'm fucking insane. And it is getting dark outside and dark inside. Let's go to fucking insane for the traffic. The traffic is fucked. <laughs> the traffic is fucking insane. I'm fucking insane. <laughs> Biff. It's not Biff, it's Bink. And you have made me say Biff a couple of times already. Bink, Bink, here's my offer. I will pay for your place to get fumigated in Montana. And also, I will give you this juicer. I have this juicer that came from a guy who loved you so much. <laughs> I taste you again, you moron. And now the last newscaster on earth wants to make this plea. I'm fucking insane and I want you to know that we are on the verge. <laughs> We are on the verge of becoming Dracula. That's right, this character is becoming Dracula. And I hope that you all know that Dracul, the Count, who is from Transylvania, was also raised and bred on Staten Island. And you know, I just watched a little bit of that show what they do in the shadows and apparently vampires were from Staten Island and the fact that they didn't use me in that fucking show makes me hate that fucking show and I watched the pilot and I said Bink Finkelstein thinks this show sucks was it an act of ego? I don't know. And now back to fucking insane. I'm fucking insane. And let me tell you that the world is coming to an end because the rivers and the oceans, not to mention my apartment, are stench ridden with death. <laughs> I'm fucking insane. And our last newscast will be tomorrow. Tomorrow night, even though you can never tell when a news can Bink! Yes, what? What do you want? Why do you keep waking up, you idiot? I have a good mind to give you that creme brulee with the caramelized sugar that is horrible. Oh, okay? But I won't give it to you until I have tortured you with all of these goddamn sketches that you've been doing for a year and a half with Tinkin, yes, that Kevin Tinkin bastard who he has to listen to all of this shit when I send it to him. <laughs> He's got to make some sense of it and put it together. Look, you shouldn't do that to anybody, especially Kevin. I know him. I know Kevin, and he... He's, he's fragile, he can't have sugar. Look, nor meat. Bink, Bink, please, please, don't give me a creme brulee that sucks. Not only is the caramelized sugar going to suck, but the pudding-like substance underneath the caramelized sugar is going to have a touch too much egg. <laughs> That's right. It's going to have a touch too much egg. Oh, no, not an eggy creme brulee. Oh, yes, my friend. And not only is it going to have a touch too much egg, it's going to have a touch too much cream. Yes, too much egg, too much cream. Yes. Bink, please, please. You've tased me a few times. You've bludgeoned me a few times. And even though I'm starting to like it. No, you are, you sick individual. Yes, I'm starting to like it, please. I, I really don't think you can sustain a podcast in this character. 
That's where you're wrong, my friend. <laughs> you know that you've gone crazy up here in Woodstock. You've lost your fucking mind. <laughs> Maybe I've regained my mind because I've been just resting. Yes, you've been resting, but you also have been left to your own devices, haven't you? You're surrounded by nature, yet you have little energy to get out in it. Yes, but I'm starting to feel better. So you say, so you say. Let me finish up the last newscaster on Earth, okay? <laughs> you get taste again, you sick puppy. Um, this is a fucking insane. This is fucking insane saying that tomorrow is another day and after that, there is maybe another tomorrow, but with the nuclear radiation coming in, I believe that this will be the last newscast tomorrow. De Pepitern, the fragrance with Biff, I mean Bink Finkelstein. Have you ever had a perfume that was so rapacious, so insatiably unheralded? A perfume that wanted to consume everything, including itself. Well, then you were familiar with Eau de Pepitern, a perfume so replete with self-destruction and with a self-loathing. Have you ever wanted to smell like self-loathing and incompetence itself? Well, then you've hit on the right perfume. That's right. Eau de Pepitone is a perfume that is so reviled, so hated by most of the people on the planet that it is only sold in stores that have been looted by indigenous peoples who were the victim of eco and violent eco catastrophe and violence from warlords that's right old de Pepitone was only available now is only available now in storefronts that were looted in horrific communities of violence and old de Pepitone is a perfume that when you put a little behind your ear, you know as well as the people around you that death and the sweet embrace of death is not far off. It is a perfume that if you put a little on your neck or put a little on your forehead or put a little under your armpit or a little on your wrist, that this perfume says, I don't want to go to nice things. I don't want to go to a rave event where everybody is on Molly. No, I want to go to a place that is dark and forbidden, like an underground tunnel of people fleeing a brutal, brutal warlord. That's right. Oh, de Pepitone. Bink. Bink, please, please, Bink. I have an offer for you. What is the offer, Peppertone? <laughs> I'm doing an ode to Peppertone right now, you stupid bastard. Bink, first of all, don't call me stupid, all right? 
That's the one thing that I can't abide by. Oh, you can't. Stupid. 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 Don't. Don't call me that stupid. Stupid. Bink, please. Please don't call me that. Let me tell you something, Mr. Pepperton. I'm from Billings, Montana, where... Yes, I know, where men are men, children. Yes, that's right. And I didn't have a good existence there because I had an apartment on the outskirts of Billings and it was an apartment that needed to be fumigated. And the landlord never fumigated it. So I lived with flying ants. That's right. Have you ever lived with flying ants? No, I, I haven't lived with flying ants, but I want to make you an offer. Let me tell you something. I'm not very open to offers because when you've lived with flying ants in Billings, Montana, they would fly directly into my soup. And I love soup. And I never could eat the soup because there would be ants in them flying. What kind of soup was it? It was usually a minestrone, chicken noodle, that kind of thing. Oh, so it was just the usual soups. Yes, whatever. Now shut up. I have an offer. To have that offer, to have to wait. Oh, de Pepitoon. That's right. Oh, de Pepitoon was a, is a fragrance that is part of the makeup of the atomic bomb. What the film Oppenheimer didn't let you know was that Eau de Pepitoon was a very important piece of the fusion of the atom. Because once a drop of Eau de Pepitoon was inserted into uranium and plutonium and all the other evil that makes the atomic bomb that was used to kill indiscriminately citizens of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Eau de Pepitone played an important part in that as it made all of the atoms, the building block of matter, explode with such a ferocity, with such a hate, that all hope for the human race was lost. Eau de Pepitoon is a fragrance that will change your life and the life of everyone around you because once you put on just a drop of Eau de Pepitoon, the stench of genocide, the stench of chaos, the chaos of a society that couldn't pink. Oh, you're awake again, pink. I realize what you're doing. What is, what am I doing? You are doing this horrible thing. You're, you're taking out your anger on the fact that your apartment was not fumigated in Montana. <laughs> oh, oh, we're playing nickel and dime psychiatrist, are we? Oh, thank you, Dr. Frud. Dr. Fraud. Not Dr. Freud, Dr. Fraud. <laughs> Here, enjoy this taser. I have an offer. <laughs> oh, de Pepitone is a fragrance that I think everyone can appreciate. And if they can't appreciate it, they can fear it. Oh, de Pepitone is to be feared. It's not a fragrance where you put some on and then go out on the town and dance to a song by the late, great Tony Bennett. 
No, only Pepperton is a fragrance that you put on when you want things to end. Put on a little eau de pepitone and crawl into a heating vent. Yes, crawl into duck, duckworth. Cra- crawl into Duckworth, not Duckworth. Duckworth was a prison in Alabama that had no, no educational or um, rehabilitative value. It just punished people and made them worse, made them recidivists. Oh, and all the pro-prison people who tell you that recidivism is just a... B- anyway... Take a little splash of eau de pepitone and realize it is not life affirming, it is life negating. If you want to negate your life, then you have the perfect perfume. And that perfume is eau de pepitone. It is available in countries that have been decimated by the imperialists and the colonialists and all the people who discovered gunpowder. Oh, the Pepitone. And now, another episode of Alan Margaret, the couple that live inside Bink Finkelstein's head. Al! Yes, Margaret? Al, what are you doing? Margaret, I am just having breakfast. Why do you ask such a stupid question? Don't you say I'm a stupid? Al, Margaret, I'm going to have to say that you sound different this week. Al, please, please, Al, don't you start with your stupid shit. Margaret, we never curse at each other. For goodness sake, why don't you come here and hug me? Okay, Al, but you know that we don't exist. Oh, Margaret, don't start that meta, don't start the meta thing where you come out of character and say we don't exist. We don't, Al, we don't. And by the way, have you noticed I'm wearing a new dress? Yes, it's a beautiful flower print dress that reminds me of a Gauguin painting. Oh, Al, I love when you reference Gauguin. Gauguin. I know, I know you love it when I reference Gauguin. That's why I went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art yesterday. And it was so nice to be in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Oh, well, I love you so much. Please, will you Will you take me to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Al? You know, Margaret, I can't tell the difference between our voices when Bink does us. Where's Eddie, Al? He's been hit over the head and tased by Bink. Is that the fella who lives in Billings, Montana, who whose soup was always filled with flying ants? Yes, Margaret, we sound exactly the same, Al. I know, I don't think Pink can do this well. Don't say that about Pink, Al. He is, he is our new home. Pink is our new home. Oh, Margaret, Al, you sound so similar to me. I know, I know. We have to help Eddie, but Eddie is tased, Al. Yes, we better, (laughs) we better say our first names all the time, Margaret, even though we've been living together for 40 years in New Hampshire. Well, 
mm, 40 years in a New Hampshire state of mind, the mind of Eddie Pepitone, and he's been taken over by Pink Finkelstein. That's right. Hello. I am Bing Finkelstein, and I want to talk to the podcast listeners for just a second. I know that the quality of Alan Margaret suffers because of the accent, and that one cannot do this, the, the regular Alan Margaret, or the regular driving in the rain, or the regular Eau de Pepitown. But you people, who listen to this podcast. Number one, you're not well. Number two, you deserve to be jolted out of your reality and into the theater of the mind. That's right. That's right, Eddie. <laughs> He's been in Woodstock now for two weeks, and he came up with this idea of having Bink Finkelstein take over the podcast. Wait till you hear the Italian alien as Binka Finkelstein. <laughs> That's right, the Italian. Hello, I am the Italian alien and I come from the planet Parmesan. I want you to know that our specials, our specials that Night are is a beautiful fettuccine with dominash in the sauce, and also I need to put an ad in the Craigslist for a part for my spaceship so I can get back to Parmesan. How do you like that? <laughs> Big fecal stick can do the Italian alien. <laughs> and now we are going to finish Alan Margaret, no matter how similar does they sound, because Eddie has been taken over by my personality. I live inside Eddie. All these characters live inside Eddie. Yes, the podcast is taking a turn. And that's right. It's taking a turn into the unknown. Oh, I'm on unknown street. I'm on unknown boulevard. I better put on the GPS. <laughs> Guess what? There is no global positioning system on this podcast. We are out of control, careening into the depths of the unconscious of a man who never lived the life that he wanted. <laughs> Eddie always wanted to be a rock climber. He wanted to climb the face of mountains that were so large, you would have to be an asshole to climb it. As a matter of fact, that would have been the title of Eddie. Of Eddie's rock climbing novel. You would have to be an asshole to climb it, is the name of the book. Also, there would be a movie. You would have to be an asshole to climb it, would be the name of the movie, the same exact title as the novel. And the movie would feature me, Eddie. I mean, Bink. I mean, Bink. I am not going to give you my true identity. I'm only going to tease the fact that I have gone insane and I'm in the Woodstock Sanatorium. That's right. I am secretly recording this podcast from the Woodstock Sanatorium, which is just like any other sanatorium except Grateful Dead music is played on the speakers and there's a drum circle 24 hours a day here at the sanatorium. We all sit around and we tap lightly on drums. I don't know if you can hear the drum circle faintly in the background, but I have... I have left the drum circle unbeknownst to the idiots in the drum circle and I'm in a water closet recording this podcast. That's right, the WC. I'm in a water closet and I am just going to finish now, Alan Margaret, and I am crazy in a Woodstock 
sanatorium and they tried to give me pills to make me better. But guess what? I don't take the pills. I tell them I already took them. <laughs> and they fall for it. I say, oh, no, I took that pill already. And they're like, Mr. Pipiton, I mean, Mr. Finkelstein, whatever you want to call me, it doesn't matter. I am the Italian alien. My name is the Italian alien. And I want you to know that we ran out of balsamic vinegar on my planet many years ago. And we don't have arugula. <laughs> the specials on my planet have become shit. Ooh. Anyway, back to Alan Margaret. Al! Yes, Margaret. Al! I feel like we need to save Eddie and wake him up from the horror that's going on. Oh, Margaret, Margaret, I don't know if we, if we can wake him up, you know. And this Bing Fickelstein, who is our new host, is tasing him and bludgeoning him. Yes, but you know, Al, that Bing is just saying that, and that Eddie is really Bing. Oh, Margaret, I fear that you are getting into territory that may get us killed. Killed. But Al, you know we don't exist. Oh, Margaret, I wish I could say that for certain. But we have become such a part of Eddie or Bink or whoever you want to call him. He basically is a vessel, an antenna for what is ever is in the world. I know, Al, I know. But Al, if he does, if he does kill us because we're getting too close to the truth, I think that's a noble way to go. You mean as truth tellers, Margaret? Yes, Sal, yes, as truth tellers. Oh, Margaret, hold me. That's right, you're both going to die. Alan, Margaret. <laughs> and you can't stop me. Oh! No! That's right, Pink. I got out of my shackles and I'm gonna take care of you right now. No, please. Uh, why don't you try the creme brulee over there? No way, Pink. Now you've been tased, Pink. Whew. Hello, everybody. This is Eddie Pepitone and uh, I'm sorry that you had to listen to Pink Finkelstein. Uh, a rogue man from Billings, Montana, who was tortured by flying ants. Um, so that was our podcast this week. Uh, just me, not not me and Bink. I don't think we'll see Bink again, but I just want you to know that a lot of care goes into this podcast. And what you heard these last 50 or so minutes was just an incredible, incredible, uh, I, again, I just want to say theater, circus of the mind, who knows, you know, what happened there. And uh, I hope everybody's good. Uh, you know, let's try to get more people on Patreon because we lost a few people uh, this month who, you know, couldn't afford it. And uh, we need more people. So let's uh, spread the word, watch us on YouTube, write a review. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. <laughs>